I'm Lauren Sommerfeld, and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Tonight, we're talking to Constable Clint Stibbe about the rules of the road, and we'll be answering all of your car questions. Lemonade is brought to you by OMVIC. That's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is Constable Clint Stibbe with Toronto Police Traffic Services and John Raymond. He's an industry consultant and APA advisor. We'll be taking your calls all evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome back to the show, Clint. Hi, John. Thank you. Nice call, John. Here. call John. <laughs> call John. Call John is here, folks, yeah. so this is the night to call for that. Clint, it's always fun when you're on. I get to pretend that I can't get in any trouble no matter what I ask you, which is... Well, that wouldn't be true. That wouldn't be so, true. Okay, well, you had to leave your um, gun back at the green room. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'll be going back to get that after the show. Uh, you know what? With uh, the way things are moving in the city of Toronto now, there are, have been a lot of changes recently and uh, also a little bit of misinformation that's out there regarding uh, collision reporting. Uh, now we have changed the types of collisions that we're actually going to do the report for if police officers are called to the scene of a collision. When we're looking at a collision now, unless you're being transported immediately to hospital, there's some evidence of criminality or damage to public, private or municipal property or uh, involves a pedestrian or cyclist, your collision will be reported at a collision reporting center, which is uh, manned by police officers. So you're still meeting a requirement under the Highway Traffic Act, but it's not going to be done at the scene. However, we are still getting calls, and even today, since we started on uh, Tuesday, I've even seen people that are uh, refusing to give information, so they need police to attend. Police will attend, make sure the information is exchanged, and then have those vehicles moved to the collision reporting center. The goal of this is to ensure uh, faster clearing of these types of collisions off the roadways, mm -hmm. uh, especially now when it involves a municipal vehicle like TTC or GO Transit Bus, mm -hmm. something that would bring that vehicle to a stop for some period of time while the report's done, inconveniencing a number of uh, commuters, uh, especially the ones on the TTC streetcar tracks, or sorry, streetcar lines, or uh, somebody maybe using the GO Bus coming into town. So with this new initiative, it's going to help open the roads up sooner and keep the delays on the transit system to a minimum. So is this part of those signs I see on the highway that say clear it, like if, if it's if you can clear it, clear it? Yes. How do we break that mindset where people think, leave it all where it is so you can retrace everyone's steps? And you the fact what? is, you guys don't care. It, uh, really, <laughs> unless it involves uh, some sort of injury, yeah. uh, life-threatening injury or uh, fatality, yeah. or some uh, evidence of criminality, as I mentioned, uh, perhaps an impaired driver and whatnot, mm -hmm. then we're coming and we're going to be doing that uh, collision. But if it's a simple side swipe, a fender bender, somebody just says they have a sore neck, that's not going to cut it anymore. So, so on a practical basis, I get rear-ended. I'm driving up young. Okay, I tell the other driver we have to move off the road um, and then we have to fill in paperwork and go uh, to a reporting quite. center? Or? <clears throat> not quite. What happens is um, if the officers do attend the scene, uh, they have now a new form that they can actually print out in the cars. Uh, it used to be we used to give out uh, the collision reporting form booklets. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, they were too small. You couldn't write all the information down. There just wasn't space. It was really, in the end, it was more advertising for the collision reporting center than actually evidence or uh, information collection for the collision reporting centers. The new forms that the officers have on board, should they need them, they can give these to the individuals. It'll basically tell them everything they need to do, or not uh, just to do, but everything uh, they need to record in order to take that information to the collision reporting centers. And by doing that, they're going to have everything first in the proper order, the same way as the reports are going to be taken up at the collision reporting centers, and it's going to simplify the process so that uh, the information is tracked at the collision reporting centers, and you're going to have all the information you need. Oh, I didn't get the driver's license number, I didn't get the license plate, all these uh, spaces are in the form. If you fill out that form, you've got all the information you need to And uh, how put about it to if the there's company. a disagreement, because often when two people are involved in a collision, one they're has both one fault. story. They're both at fault. They're both at fault. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Everyone so, thinks everybody else is at fault. You know, there was fault. sometimes this feeling that if there was a, a police officer present, then there could be some sort of closure on that, and now there won't be a closure. Or? Well, I think what people don't realize, though, unless you do it right in front of the cop and he sees it, and you want to decide that's your best eyewitness, I don't. Maybe you are. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Um, insurance adjusters decide who hit who, I was and just, they're yeah. really good at reconstructing what happened by the angle that the and paint was taken off. And that's absolutely true, but, but the so, public doesn't realize that. Well, that's the thing. They have a lot of faith, as they should, in officers, which is fine, except insurance adjusters are the ones who hold most of the power when it comes to determining fault exactly. and how much it's going to exactly. cost you. So move the stuff out. And well, you have to keep in mind, the fact that we've identified, uh, for instance, you may be at fault, but 
in the collision uh, report that's taken, I don't know, we've got you coming uh, out of a side street, but a motorcycle coming up the center lane at 150. Well, technically, you're the most at fault at that point. However, the insurance companies, when they read the information and, okay, well, hold on, this motorcycle is doing 150 in a turning lane when it, you know, it shouldn't have been there, yeah. everybody else stopped, you know, they'll take that into account because really in the end, it doesn't matter what our assessment is, it's more um, determining where it's proper for us to do the collision investigation at the scene or uh, sending it to the collision re reporting centers, which can take the report and if necessary, they may lay charges depending on what they see in case there's a, perhaps no insurance mm -hmm. uh, or something along those lines. But really the goal is, and at this point, we quite honestly can't keep up with the tremendous demand on our resources because over the last two years, we've seen a 5% increase in collisions uh, every year since 2013. Okay. Well, Traffic Services, which is now responsible for all the collision investigations in the city, cannot handle 64,000 collisions per year on its own. There's 330 officers. That includes everybody. Well, do the numbers. This is a tremendous number of collisions on a daily basis. We're averaging about 170, 180 collisions a day. We don't have 170 guys out to do the uh, collision reports. And if a, a simple property damage collision will take three hours, a complicated one where it's a life-threatening injury or death is seven or eight hours. Mm -hmm. And that ties up a number of officers, hospitals, at the scene, collision reconstruction officers. Like, it's a massive deployment of resources in order to deal with those types of collisions. Mm -hmm. A fender bender does not need a collision reconstruction officer to look at that. Mm -hmm. And it the needs... car is blocking the road when other motors could Absolutely, and that, that's the goal of this. The steer to clear it was started last year, mm -hmm. and this is the is next working? step up. Like are people, like again, people have got their head wrapped around the fact, don't touch anything until, you know, please get if, there. If and an I'm telling people, clear it, clear it, clear it. Clear yeah, it, if an individual's been, I'm going to say through the system before, meaning yeah. they've, had, they've had prior <laughs> collisions, then they're well versed in what to do. Yeah. Tow truck drivers uh, know, now know what those uh, new rules are. Mm -hmm. They can, t if the vehicle's undrivable, they can take those vehicles to the reporting center. There has been some questions raised from uh, lawyers saying, oh, no, 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 you know, uh, the level of injury, you know, you've got a sore neck, uh, police officers need to do the collision. Mm, no, if you're not going to the hospital, we're not doing it. Because first thing that a uh, uh, call comes in for a personal injury collision, I've got a sore neck, ambulance shows up, and what does the person say? I'm good, I'm, fine. I'm not going. Uh, well, guess what? If you're not going in the back of that ambulance, we're not doing the report there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why? Because you may be a bruised, you may have a sore hand. If you have a broken bone, you're going to the hospital. Let's yeah. call it what it is. Right. Yeah. But if it's soft tissue injuries, you're not going. Last week I got a question at the APA. Someone called in and said they got their renewal for their plate and they noticed that there was a, a parking violation on. Mm -hmm. They never got um, notice. As far as they're concerned, they never received a written notice. There was never a right. notice on the car and they were asking what should they do they don't have much choice, they have to pay it. Because it's being collected through the Ministry of Transportation, similar to 407 fees. Mm -hmm. You can't get your validation sticker unless you pay those fees. Right. And I mean, I've got my Valtag coming up. I don't have anything outstanding, but I've got to pay the 100 and I think it's $8 now yeah. uh, for, the, uh, for the validation sticker. You know what, unfortunately, if there's a mistake, Okay, take it up with uh, the parking enforcement. Ask them to produce the ticket. You know, follow up. Find out what happened. So they could do that before they renew their their plate. They could go to parking enforcement. Gets, and it gets a little dicey because if it's and a lot of people leave it right to the last minute. All of a sudden, they've got this outstanding. If they can't get the validation done and they're stopped by an officer, it's a hundred and ten dollar fine on the spot for and somebody operating a motor vehicle paying without a, ticket a valid. To sixty bucks or seventy eight bucks. If exactly. It's right. Exactly. Outside, so. And the other thing is, uh, parking enforcement now can write uh, the tags or tickets for expired validations as well. Well, that's so. New, isn't it? it started uh, last year as well. Yeah. But the point is, if it's parked with an expired validation, you're going to get a ticket. If you're driving with an expired validation, it's going to get a ticket. You know what? If it's one ticket, pay it and then deal with the deal with the city. Determine if it was for yours. If it wasn't yours, they're going to give you the money back. Right. Yeah. But because it, it, it's entirely possible somebody used a fraudulent plate, they're going to have, the officer's going to have notes, uh, evidence indicating where the car was, when it was, what the the type of vehicle it was. Tags can come off cars. People can take them off, especially nightclub district, two in the morning or something. <laughs> people will pull tags off, joking around. Someone else borrows your car, gets a ticket, puts it in a pocket or a purse, and leaves. Doesn't tell you. You, you. It's true. You don't know that. Or that they remove the ticket it. on your car that you probably got and yeah. put it on their car so they Absolutely. can park they overnight. Don't get another ticket. So exactly. there's a lot of yeah. things that can. Exactly. Sit. And unfortunately, what you don't realize is if somebody's done this to you, you have no you idea. Know. No. Yeah. It's that. And then, in some cases, it goes to a collection agency. 
mm -hmm. now because yeah. the city is now pushing more for the so I think election you're right. agency. Pay it and fight after the fact because there's the well, let, Let's call it what it is. If you got a ticket from the city, I'm going to suggest you probably did do something yeah, wrong. You probably did do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is it, I mean, can it be a mistake being made? Sure, but they're not uh, taking uh, reductions in the fines anymore. So. Jaded right, so. and cynical. The Lemonade Car <laughs> Show brought to you by Onvik, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls 800 968 7836.